Thank you all for coming out tonight. The World Health Organization has just announced that by the end of 2015, virtually every nation in the world, 195 out of 196 countries in the world, have agreed to use or are already using the Salk vaccine to completely eradicate polio. Jonas, I want you to know, wherever you are, uh, rest assured that there is a wave of humanity getting your job done right now. Uh, he, he started a movement with the vaccine that was safe and effective. Uh, and now, just now, the job is, is, is at the end game. It's, we're this close. Uh, the elimination of polio has recently been called the largest ever international mobilization in times of peace. The Global Eradication Initiative is driving the end game, and that's the World Health Organization teamed up with the Rotary, teamed up with the UNICEF, teamed up with the CDC, and teamed up with the Gates Foundation. Uh, the Gates Foundation has made polio eradication on a global basis its number one priority. It's their main focus. An eradication of this virus will affect every child that is born in the future. When I was born, this was my mother's worst nightmare, polio. Now it's gone in America. It's gone forever. And because of Jonas Salk and this incredible global support system, so that's why this is a, 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 a night for celebration and that's why we got together. He's not just a, uh, a story of a hero in action. I think his life offers lessons and a formula for how any of us can change the world. Just recently, Charlotte Jacobs, who is up here, um, released the definitive biography on Dr. Jonas Salk, uh, the man behind that great moment. As his friend and the co-founder of a company called the Immune Response Corporation, I got to know Jonas very well, and I was tremendously inspired every moment of every day that I spent with Jonas. Jonas Salk made uh, some of the most major contributions uh, to medicine. Uh, not only his polio vaccine, but he co-developed the first effective influenza vaccine and was working on an AIDS vaccine uh, when he died. I was asked to make a few comments uh, tonight about why I undertook this biography and a little bit about what my process was. In um, 1954, uh, my hometown of Kingsport, Tennessee, was selected as one of the test sites for the March of Dimes for the polio vaccine. So I was uh, one of the first children uh, to receive the polio vaccine and was proud to be called a polio pioneer. Well, a year later, on April 12, 1955, when it was announced to the world uh, that Jonas Salk's vaccine was effective and polio could be prevented, uh, he became among the greatest hero of our generation. But then I did probably one of the most important things, and that is I did over 100 interviews of uh, family members, of friends, of classmates going back to uh, high school and college and medical school. I interviewed many of the scientists that had worked with him uh, throughout various aspects of his life, his secretaries, nurses, journalists that wrote about him, Nobel Prize winners. And all of them gave me different anecdotes about him um, and told me things that gave me a more intimate portrait of the man, which is what I really wanted to accomplish in writing this biography. And then one day he got a call from a 33-year-old man he had never heard of before named Kevin Kimberlin, who was, of all things, an entrepreneur, and told him he wanted to work with him on the AIDS problem. Um, he was a little leery. He had lots of people calling him about things, and he really had never delved into the corporate world uh, before. Um, but Kevin was an earnest young man, and he was persistent. And eventually, a great friendship began, and uh, together uh, they started Immune Response Corporation. I think that uh, he played an important role in Jonas Salk's later life. And uh, I just want to read a section, a short paragraph from my book. And now, toward the end of his life, there was his AIDS vaccine. Salk's self-worth had always centered on his physician-scientist role, and it was slipping away. 
When the desperate need for an AIDS vaccine became apparent, Salk found a raison d'etre. Kevin Kimberlin entered his life at a pivotal point. He, Dennis Carlo, and Alexandra Levine revered Salk, empowered him, and became his friends. In doing so, they revitalized him. So I will always be thankful to Kevin for playing that important role in Jonas Salk's life. I think they both share uh, the key characteristics which made Jonas so successful, and that is idealism, passion, and tenacity. 